All right, let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please state your name? Julian Ackert. And can you please describe your educational background following high school? I have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from the University of Virginia. What is your profession? Uh, I am a computer forensics uh, investigator. Where are you employed? I work for a company called iDiscovery Solutions, or IDS. And what is your title? I'm a managing director at that company. What services does IDS perform? IDS provides uh, consulting, expert testimony, forensic analysis, data analysis, electronic data, review and production services, all to the business and legal community. What if any of those services performed by IDS have you performed? I perform all of those services. How many years of experience do you have in computer forensics investigation? Uh, I've worked in the industry for 20 years. Can you please describe that experience to the jury? Uh, I have experience uh, creating and implementing data preservation and collection strategies, mm -hmm. uh, doing data collections in a forensically sound manner, extracting data from collections, as well as analysis and metadata analysis of the evidence that I extract. You mentioned collecting data from forensic collections. Um, what material are you forensically imaging? Uh, this would be any type of material that stores digital evidence, an iPhone, an iPad, a tablet, uh, Laptop, a cloud account, your Gmail account, anything that has digital evidence. Have you published in your areas of expertise? Yes, I've published on data preservation and collection and analysis strategies. Have you ever given any trainings or presentations to other individuals in the e-discovery area? Now yes, this I is have. Amber's I do witness. Trainings and presentations to lawyers through continuous learning education. What, if any, professional certifications do you have? I have a GIAC GCFE, that's the GIAC Certified Forensic Examiner Certification. And what were the requirements of obtaining that certification? Uh, to obtain that certification, you need a minimum number of hours in the field, as well as you need to pass a test with a certain degree of- My credentials. Uh, uh, a certain percentage of passing. My credentials. Do you belong to any professional organizations? I do, I'm a member of a conference called the Sedona Conference. It's a conference that uh, is a, a group of uh, legal professionals, judges, and technologists, and we discuss the intersection of law and technology and technology issues in the legal community. Have you previously served as an expert witness? Yes, I have. And when did you first serve as an expert witness? I believe that would have been around 2009 was the first time I served. Have you previously been qualified as an expert witness in the field of computer forensics? Yes, I have. I've been qualified probably a half dozen to a dozen times in both federal and state court, including this court right here. And has a court ever declined to qualify you as an expert witness? No, they have not. Your Honor, I offer Julian Acker as an expert in the field of computer forensics. No objection, Your All Honor. All right, so moved. Could you just spell your last name for me, Mr. Acker? Ackert, A-C-K-E-R-T. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Mr. Acker, what is forensic imaging? Forensic imaging is the process of capturing the data on a digital device in a forensically sound manner. And how is a forensic copy created? Uh, using specialized software that's available to forensic investigators, we're able to collect the data from devices, and that software may vary depending on the device, like a phone or a, or a laptop. What type of information does a forensic image collect? It's meant to really collect everything on the device. So, for example, on a laptop, it's going to collect your documents, your emails, your photographs, your uh, documents like Excel spreadsheets, PDF files, any applications that you ran, uh, the, the history of what you've opened or looked at on the laptop, as well as all of the metadata for these different types of electronically stored information files. And does any other information accompany that information that's collected? Uh, typically with a forensic image, you're also going to get log files. Log files are files that help you validate the forensic image and uh, verify that it was a forensically sound data collection. Mm -hmm. And how do log files <laughs> She's enable doing you the to creepy do that? Face again. Uh, log Shit. files list information within the files. Uh, sometimes they're even embedded within the images themselves, but they provide verification information that allows you to authenticate the image and the data. <laughs> what is she doing? Image. 
what is the purpose of creating a forensic image of devices or data? Why is her hair In order like to green, extract almost. and analyze data forensically for the courts, you need to create a forensic image That's of the like data That's like washed first out. And gather the forensic, uh, gather like the data from the forensic image. or something. Image. And what if any specific types of data are collected in that image and extraction? Uh, it's going to be any type of data that comes from the image, whether you're extracting photographs or documents or spreadsheets or anything of that nature. Um, do you recall Mr. Neumeister mentioning the term hashing yesterday? I do. What is that? Hashing is essentially the, a digital fingerprint of a file. It's an evaluation of the binary ones and zeros or how the file is stored on a hard drive and it examines the ones and zeros in a manner that gives every file a digital fingerprint, essentially, and identifies the uniqueness of the file. And what, if any, applicability does hashing have to the, the visual appearance? The jury's probably like fucking falling asleep data. right now. Uh, hashing has nothing to do with the visual appearance. For example, if I had a Word document that I printed and then saved, therefore I haven't visually changed the Word document, the metadata of that Word document indicating that I printed it would be different, and therefore that Word document would not hash to the version that I that used before printing. <laughs> Can you give any examples of digital photographs that visually appear the same, not hashing? Uh, I believe Mr. Neumeister included three of those in his demonstratives yesterday, three side-by-side -side photographs that uh, looked visually the same but did not hash. Uh, it made sense that they wouldn't hash. Each of them had different file sizes. And a file size can change for a photograph depending on what you do with the photograph. So for example, maybe you want to take that photograph and email it to somebody and on your phone, uh, you choose to use a small, medium, or large, or different size of the photograph when you email. When you send that email with that photograph, you've changed the hash value because you've changed the ones and zeros because you've changed the size of the photograph. And what, if anything, do you recall from Mr. Neumeister's testimony regarding Photos 3? Uh, Mr. Neumeister was concerned about a particular metadata field, EXIF metadata, which there's two types of metadata for files. There's the embedded metadata, which is what we're discussing here, the EXIF metadata, and external metadata. And Mr. Neumeister was concerned with embedded metadata within the file that indicated that the software version that the file last ran through was Photos. What is Photos 3.0? Photos is actually the software application that's built into the Apple Macintosh operating system for laptops. Uh, this is the application that launches by default when you're on an Apple computer and use Photos. What are the capabilities of Photos 3.0? There's multiple capabilities for it. You can, for example, create an album with it and put multiple photos within an album. You can uh, organize or sort your photos by date and time taken or place. Uh, you can also use that to edit photos. You mentioned metadata earlier. What is that? Uh, metadata is information about a file. For example, with a document, it could be when was the document created or last saved or who saved it, who was the author of the document. For photographs, metadata includes information that you've seen on demonstratives before, included, including when was the image taken, what kind of phone took the image, what software was originally used for that image. Uh, any type of information inside the photograph, the EXIF data that you've heard, is metadata. Did you form any opinions in response to Mr. Neumeister's testimony regarding Photos 3.0 appearing in a software EXIF metadata field? Yes, I did. And what are those? Uh, my opinion is that at, for each of the photos that he identified, for all but one in his demonstrative, I actually found the equivalent original photo that did not have photos in the EXIF metadata. In other words, those are the photos that he was uh, indicated he would have expected to see the iOS or the phone software version on those photos. How do you know it is an original version of the photograph? Oh, this, is, this is a little bit dependent on the Apple ecosystem. Uh, Amber uses Apple devices, and those devices, by definition of how Apple works, synchronize your information from device to de device. So for example, if you take a photo on your phone, you see that same photo on your tablet or your iPad or your iCloud account or even your MacBook. And that's all because of user experience. Apple wants you to be able to see and visually have the same experience on all your devices. So the photo that was originally taken traverses or gets synchronized to other devices by design of Apple. And that synchronization process does not affect the metadata that we're talking about here, which is the embedded metadata. 
When you say that a version of iOS software was listed in the software exit metadata field, what does that mean? Uh, that means that the photo was not saved using the photos application. And what, if any, data sets did you use to come to that conclusion? I used all of the data sets that I collected or were collected for uh, Amber, including mobile devices, tablets, laptops, etc. cetera. Um, Michelle, can you please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1671? Um, do you recognize this chart, Mr. Eckert? I do. What is it? Without, without yet saying what it, the contents, just generally, what is it? Uh, this is a chart I created as part of my report. Your Honor, permission to publish Defendant 671 is a demonstrative. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right. It'll be published as a demonstrative. Um, Mr. Acker, can you please describe in more detail what the information in this chart is? And Michelle, if you could just stay at the top for a quick second. A little further up. Great. Thank you. Uh, this chart represents uh, for each of the items in Neumeister's report, which his demonstrative was based on, the page number of uh, the item on his report and the, ID, the items that I found on Ms. Hurd's devices that did not indicate the software metadata field showing photos. Rather, they indi indicated that they were the original software metadata field of iOS. And do you see the second column titled Neumeister Report Date Captured? Yes, I do. What does the information in that column mean? Uh, this is the date time metadata of the particular photo on Neumeister's report. So for example, uh, the first row, 23, the date time captured, or the date captured is December 16th, 2015. Uh, the second row, 24, you see that the date time is May 21st, 2016. Third row, May 21st, 2016. Fourth row, May 21st, 2016. Can you scroll to the next page, please, Michelle? Uh, please continue for the, the items on this page. Uh, the top row of this page, the one that came from Neumeister's report, page 30, shows December 16th, 2016. And then finally, 32 shows March 23rd, 2013. Do you see, uh, can you scroll back to the top, please, Michelle? Do you see the, um, all the way at the top, I'm sorry. The right-hand column uh, of this chart. Yes, I do. And where it says device ID and file name? Yes. Can you please explain what the information in that column means for each of the items identified from Mr. Neumeister's demonstrative? Uh, so these are the evidence IDs, and evidence ID is the ID value I give to a particular piece of data that I collect, for example, a phone or a laptop. And the matching file name found on that evidence ID that indicated the original version of the same photograph that Neumeister identified that did not show photos in the software metadata and rather showed the iOS version in the metadata. And what do the little A's followed by numbers back up? What does that mean? <clears throat> Those are evidence IDs. Anything with an A number is the evidence ID of an actual device collected. Anything that starts with a backup and follows by another number is an iTunes backup. So what if any, what items in this right-hand column, um, based on the coding you have here, are iTunes This is backups. ridiculous. Uh, only the ones that <laughs> the start with the word backup. Asleep, guys. Even the ones that start with an A number are actually an iTunes or an iOS backup in iCloud. So your phone can actually be backed up to iCloud, and those are coming from an iOS backup in iCloud. Everything else is coming from an actual physical device. Um, can you just take this down for a second, Michelle, and pull up 1675, please? Defendant 1675. And um, do you recognize this chart, Mr. Ackert? Yes, I do. Without yet getting into the contents, can you please describe generally what it is? Uh, this is a chart that I prepared as a summary of my findings. Um, permission to publish Defendant 1675 is a demonstrative, Your Honor. Any objection? No objection. All right, 1675 will be published as demonstrative. Um, can you please describe in more detail what the three columns you can see in this chart represent? Uh, sure, this starts to give some detail about the particular evidence ID. 
So for example, A001 was an iPhone X of Amber's that was collected. A002 was an iPad of Amber's collected. Uh, A10, I'm sorry, A11, 12, and 13, slightly down, are three different laptops that were collected for Amber. And do you see the IDS evidence number column? Yes, I do. Do you see the source type column? Yes, I do. And the source details column? Yes, I do. Can you please describe what those columns mean? Uh, generally, the IDN evidence number is the evidence number that we assign to a particular piece of evidence, and the type and details come from a description of that type of evidence. Can you beguile people set. with gobbledygook talk? And, uh, Michelle, can you please do a side by side of 1675 and 1671? Ring! Um, so, Mr. Acker, can you please describe the relationship between these two demonstrative exhibits? Certainly. Uh, if you look at 1671, the one on the left, you can see in the fourth column uh, the different evidence IDs where I identified the original versions of those same pictures that Mr. Neumeister had uh, specifically identified and the sources of where they were identified. So if you look at the first one, for example, the uh, uh, the picture Neumeister referenced on page 24, uh, or I guess that's the second one, there are equivalent versions or original versions of those that do not show the software EXIF metadata field of photos. Rather, it shows the original iOS version on A001, which was uh, Amber Heard's iPhone X, A002, which is Amber Heard's iPad Pro, uh, Scrolling on down through there, you see it on A0011, which is Amber Heard's uh, laptop, same with A0012 and 13. Uh, you can see this again with the next row that's visible at the very top. Uh, uh, Neumeister identified a photograph on page 30, uh, taken on December 16th, 2015, and he was concerned about the uh, uh, EXIF metadata of that, showing the software version of photos. The original versions of those were found, again, on A001, that's her iPhone X, A002, her iPad. And it's not surprising to me that I found all these on all the devices because that's how the Apple ecosystem works. It replicates your pictures or synchronizes your pictures across your devices when you take them. Um, Mr. Acker, you can take this down, Michelle. Do you recall Mr. Neumeister's testimony regarding what he claims of EXIF metadata modification? Yes, I do. This is a completely hypothetical scenario. Mr. Neumeister never specified any pictures with specificity that were, had EXIF metadata modification, and I, it's a hypothetical in my opinion. Um, Mr. Acker, did you form any overall conclusions in this case? Yes, I did. And what were those? The images that uh, were created in this case were included log files that allowed me to validate and verify the evidence collected. I validated and verified the log files of the uh, evidence for which I found Mr. Neumeister's original photos that he had, had concerns about, specifically the ones that had iOS in the software metadata field. Uh, I validated that those came from devices that had, uh, had, been, had log files that were validated by me. In other words, they came from original evidence files. And Hi, in, in this most guy's instances, so boring. they came from more than one file. Ba, ba, ba. Um. Mr. Acker, the opinions you have testified to, to, testified to today made to a reasonable degree of forensic certainty. Yes, they are. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Cross-examination, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. You've worked with opposing counsel's law firm approximately 20 times before? Give or take, yes. For more than a dozen years? Those 20 probably would have spread out, been spread out over more than a dozen years. Okay. As you sit here today, you cannot testify that all of the photographs produced by Ms. Hurd are authentic originals, correct? No, I can testify to the ones that Mr. Neumeister identified with specificity. Oh! Right, but there were thousands of photographs provided that Mr. Neumeister didn't testify. Correct. Right? I have no opinions on any photographs that the opposing expert has no opinions on. All right. My question to you, though, is as you sit here today, 
Can you testify that all the photographs produced by Ms. Hurd are authentic originals? As I sit here today, I cannot opine to photographs that have not been presented to me that are not authentic originals. All right. You'll agree with me that in some instances, Ms. Hurd produced multiple versions of the same photograph, right? Yes. Yeah, you just talked about it, right? Yes. And you'll agree with me that the XF data of some of the photos produced by Ms. Hurd reflect the use of a photo editing application. No. No? I'll agree that they show the use of the photos application, which is a sorting and editing application. And editing. Okay. So you, what, what you were quibbling with is that it will both sort and edit. That is correct. Okay. Are you prepared to swear under oath that each and every photograph provided by Ms. Hurd and entered into evidence in this court is an authentic original? Based on the metadata that I have reviewed of the specific photographs I have reviewed, I can confirm that those are authentic original photographs. For the ones that Mr. Neumeister identified, I identified photos that were authentic originals. No, I'm asking you a broader question than that. There were multiple photographs that Ms. Hurd provided that were entered into evidence in this court. Are you testifying that those are each authentic originals? I have no uh, testimony or opinion on those because nobody's provided me opinion that they're not. Okay. Mr. Gibson, will you pull up Defendant's Exhibit 712 and Defendant's 713 next to one another? Your Honor, these have already been admitted, and I ask that we publish it to the jury. Okay. If they're admitted, we can publish. Can you see those, sir? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, shit. You'll agree with me that those are different pictures? Visually, they look different to me, yes. All right. We can take that down. Visually, they look different than me. I can. Mr. Gibson, can you pull up plaintiff's exhibit 1308? <clears throat> this has not been admitted, Your Honor, and, I'm, and I propose to use it as a demonstrative. Any objection? Not as a demonstrative, Your Honor. All right. Be identified and publish to the jury as a demonstrative. Oof. Any objection to entering it into evidence? Uh, I would object it's cumulative, Sorry. Your Honor. Um, actually, no. Uh, no. No objection, Your no Honor. No objection. All right. It's in evidence, then. All right. 1308 is in evidence. Mr. Gibson, can you blow up the time, date, and file name? Sir, you just agreed with me that those two photos are different photos, correct? I agreed that they were visually different, yes. Right. So they are two visually different photos that were created at the exact same hour, the exact same minute, oh. the exact same second as each other, correct? And that's what the daytime metadata shows, yes. Ah! Founded! The metadata shows something else, too. They have the exact same file name, don't they, sir? Yes, but that's not embedded metadata. Right. How would you have this jury decide which one is real? Oh. I think you would need to look at the software metadata field, which I haven't looked at. I don't recall if I looked at for this particular field, but I think that's what even Mr. Neumeister said, that you need to look at the software metadata field. But we have two photographs entered into evidence in this court yep. that have the same identifying information, but in your view, look visually different, correct? 
So uh, I don't agree that they have the same identifying information. I'm not, I don't see a software metadata field here. The identifying information includes the, the hour, minute, and second they were taken, this, this picture were taken. I see that. No further questions. All right. And just for the record, since we already have 712 and 713 in evidence as, as redacted, now this will be 712 and 713A. So 712A and 712.13A are now in evidence just to keep the record clean, okay? All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Redirect. Um, Mr. Acker, you just mentioned embedded metadata. What is that? Embedded metadata is metadata inside a file. Uh, I talked earlier about the date printed of a Word document. That's embedded into the file, and that traverses with the file wherever it goes. And based on all of the photo metadata you have reviewed, do you have any reason to question the forensic authenticity of any photos Mr. Neumeister testified to for which you were responding to? Can you repeat that question, please? Yes. Yeah. Based on all of the photo metadata you have reviewed, based on the photos Mr. Neumeister testified to, do you have any reason to question the forensic authenticity of those photos? I do not. Following your cross-examination, Mr. Eckert, have any of your opinions in this matter changed? They have not. And is it still your testimony that the opinions you testified to do today are made with a reasonable degree of forensic certainty? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Sir, you can have a seat in the courtroom or you're free to go. All right. Did you want to approach just for a moment? All right, so that guy just got totally fucking felted. He did a bunch of gobbledygook talk, and then it just took a couple minutes to take him down. Boom.